the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. Brought to you by the Goose Hummock Shops, Cape Cod's largest outdoor outfitter. Serving New England since 1946. Shop them online at themightyfish.com. Welcome to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. The My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is your local source for the latest news and information on fishing Cape Cod. Now, here's your host, Kevin Collins. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast here from MyFishingCapeCod.com. I'm your host, Kevin Collins, back with you for episode number four of our bi-weekly 2020 podcast season. And it's beautiful out right now as I look out my window. The last week to 10 days, we've had a little bit of gnarly weather. We've had winds kind of coming from the north, northeast. We had Tropical Storm Kyle churning out off Cape Cod, sending us plenty of wind and waves. But it looks like things have quieted down. We're back to our 80-degree temperatures and our nice warm wind from the southwest, which makes Cape Cod Bay pretty much flat as a pond. And that's what we like here during July and August here on Cape Cod. So we got a great podcast in store for you today. We've got our usual panel of guest experts lined up. We're going to be joined in a moment by MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins. We're then going to be joined by Bruno Demir from down at his office at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi. And last but not least, we'll be joined by Phil Howarth from down at the Goose Hummock in Orleans. So let's dive right into today's program, shall we? First up on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is My Fishing Cape Cod founder and creator, Ryan Collins. Ryan, how are you on this beautiful day? I'm doing well, Kevin. It is a gorgeous Friday, a little bit cooler. It definitely feels like late summer. I know one of the first things that we want to talk about is the amazing accomplishment of the members. And let's talk about the members in the forum and the sum of money that they raised this week for Rifles to Rods. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, you know, thanks again to all the members in the forum who contributed and donated to Rifles to Rods. We raised exactly $2,000, which is great. And if you're not familiar with Rifles to Rods, they are a nonprofit that takes veterans fishing and they use fishing as therapy so always awesome to be able to help them and i just wanted to say thanks again to everybody who donated to that cause we're going to talk a little bit about black sea bass ryan later in the podcast i always ask our good buddy bruno demir from down at cape and islands mitsubishi about black sea bass but i know some of the members are still getting into the black sea bass as well yeah tim donnelly i was going through the forum today and i saw that tim I think yesterday or the day before, had a pretty nice trip for himself in Nantucket Sound. And everybody gets so excited about black sea bass during the springtime, and they often come in very shallow water, especially in Cape or uh, Buzzards Bay, excuse me. But I haven't really been hearing about or seeing people posting too much about black sea bass since the spring. So I was really happy to see that Tim got into some keeper black sea bass. I believe he was around Bishop and Clerks which is a reef in Nantucket Sound. I believe they're actually, back in the 1800s, there used to be a lighthouse on that rocky reef. It can be kind of a little dicey area, but it's very productive for bottom fishing. So that was good to see, and I think Tim got those black sea bass using a big bucktail jig with a gulp curly tail, which is always a a go-to. Now, Ryan, we were talking a little bit yesterday. We had a chance to visit, but it seems like some of the funny fish have arrived here on Cape Cod. I haven't heard anything about Albies yet, aside from some stray rumors, and that's pretty much how it goes. I mean, who knows? Maybe somebody has caught an Albie, but I haven't personally seen any evidence of Albies just yet. But the Bonito are here in force. They really arrived big time, or, you know, they were here earlier in the year, but then they kind of went quiet. But then again, just this past week, uh, yesterday and the day before, in particular, in the forum, Jonathan Gitlin, who's one of our top posters in the forum, I always like reading his reports, he got into some really big bonito. I mean, these, based off the pictures in the forum, I don't know how big they were, but they had to be at least 25 inches long, I would, I would guess, mm. if not a little bigger. Monster bonito, and he said he was out over by Nantucket and the south side of Martha's Vineyard, which is normally, I believe, where you get those real big bonito i know last year at this time of the summer trolling yozuris and swimming plugs around squib knocket 
in that area produced some 30 inch long bonito. So, you know, hopefully that'll happen again. And there are smaller bonito in Cape Cod Bay as well. So you've got the smaller bonito in Cape Cod Bay. And then if you want a really monster bonito, then I would head over towards the island. A lot of times, Ryan, the Albies show up in Buzzards Bay when they do show up. Can you give us a little bit of a report on Buzzards Bay and the conditions out there? Well, from what I'm gathering, there's plenty of bait. So the stage is is set. You know, that's what everybody always says, right? So when the Albies do arrive, there's got to be plenty for them to feed on in Buzzards Bay unless things change. I've seen quite a few flocks of birds myself, and in the forum, I've been reading about members such as John Kingston, who's another top poster in our forum. He reported tons of bait and birds all over the place in Buzzards Bay this past week. And Alex Cadet, who we've talked about before on the podcast here, he got into a ton of bluefish this past week. I think mostly snappers up to like, you know, five pounders all throughout Buzzards Bay looking under or working under the birds. So if you're heading out to Buzzards Bay, I mean, the stage is set, and I think the Albies could show up at any point. Last year they showed up the last week of August. So it's just about that time of the year. It's definitely worthwhile to bring some binoculars with you whenever you're surf casting or going on the kayak or the boat because there are plenty of birds in Buzzards Bay and definitely lots of bluefish and schoolies and hopefully some Albies sooner than later. Ryan, let's talk about the canal real quick. I haven't heard a ton about it. Can you give us a brief report on the canal, the east end and the west end? Well, I think people got spoiled this year, or excuse me, people got spoiled in previous years. And, you know, seeing the, the videos on YouTube, et cetera, of these huge canal blitzes, you know, there's been some nice fish, some nice blitzes here and there. But in general, it's it's been a slower year for sure. And I don't have any big news over the past couple days. Um, you know, I did see in the forum, Stephen Nasowitz, he reported a few schoolies and one small pot of fish that he saw for like 10 seconds. I think that was yesterday or the day before. Tim Mugarini, he did well earlier in the week at night. He did catch some slot size fish and some shorts. And he's been using teasers to imitate some of the smaller bait that's around. There's a lot of silver sides around. There's a lot of small, small peanut bunker around. So there's definitely bait in the canal, but I haven't really heard too much about big fish. I'm, I guarantee there's some in there, but you definitely got to work at it. You know, they're not, it's not got to be blitz type fishing. I mean, hopefully that will change and, and maybe we'll have a great September, October, but it hasn't, it hasn't been blitz all out you know, everybody getting 40 inch fish. That's for sure. You got to really work at it. And most people that I'm seeing in the forum or talking to are reporting schoolies and, and not a heck of a lot of them, but a nice, you know, thing to keep in mind off the East end of the canal, there were some really nice Benito feeds uh, yesterday. So that is something to keep in mind. If, if you're going down the canal, maybe check out the Scusset jetty and bring some long casting metal lures with you because you might have a chance of hooking a Benito. And Ryan, I know you've been doing some floating around in Cape Cod Bay in the tin boat from time to time. What are you seeing out there in Cape Cod Bay? Lots of birds. You know, that, that's pretty much what I'm hearing from, from people all throughout the Cape is there's lots of small bait around, small peanut bunker, and there's lots of turns and all sorts of birds working over these piles of bait. And yesterday I found... Uh, schoolies and bluefish. I actually got one 28 incher in the tin boat. Like you said, in Cape Cod Bay, that that whole stretch of the south side of, of Cape Cod Bay from the canal down to Barnstable and east towards Brewster Flats. If you got to be fishing that area, just look for the birds. And, um, you know, sometimes the bass are extremely finicky when, when they're on the small bait, but yesterday they were hitting poppers pretty good. All right, Ryan, thanks for all the intel this week. Really appreciate you taking some time to catch up with us, and we look forward to our next visit. Thanks, Kevin. I'll talk with you soon. Well, up next on today's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our good buddy, Bruno Demir. Bruno, how are you today? Doing fantastic on this lovely, windless, sunny afternoon. Unfortunately, stuck at work. 
but not for so long. How are things down there at Cape and Islands Mitsubishi? They are awesome. Deals are hot. Inventory is low. Um, but we still managed to get managed to get some really good trucks in and uh, we're ready to cater to our fishermen. Well, that's good to hear. And let's get right into the fishing, Bruno. We're going to talk about a wide variety of species on today's podcast, but let's start off with striped bass. As I know that's what most of our members want to hear about. What are you hearing about the striper bite right now, Bruno? Your striper bite, your best bet for a striper right now is going to the Brewster Flats if you're by uh, if you're casting from land, and then uh, if you got you know means to a boat, your best shot is to uh, basically go from the east end all the way down towards Scorton's Ledge. There's uh, there's plenty of striper. Uh, your only obstacle is they're on really small bait, so they can be finicky. So bring in your smaller jigs and see what you can pull up. Any intel, Bruno, on Nantucket Sound as far as striped bass are concerned? Um, I haven't too heard too much about striped bass on the sound side, but I am hearing that guys are starting to get on funny fish on that side of the cape. Well, that's good to hear. Talk a little bit about the funny fish bite that's moved into the area. Well, I can tell you um, I'm seeing a lot of activity, and, and a lot of guys call me and tell me because, you know, I'm a, bonito attic and uh if you know if you're a member of mfcc you'll see that uh john gitlin uh pulled up one of the biggest bonitos i've seen in a long time and they really got on him around nantucket and he gave us some details on where he caught it on the forums but if you're a member you could see what what he was talking about on the forums which is one of the best advantages of it but uh could see some funny fish starting to pop up, especially I'm seeing albies coming up on the west end of the canal, and you're seeing albies around the island. So it, it's a matter of time, probably next week, when you're going to see the albies start coming right into the sound. Bruno, I know you like to get out on the boat from time to time when you can get away from the office. What kind of bait are you seeing floating around out there? There's a lot of small, like silverbacks, a lot of peanut bunker. If you're a bait fisherman, it's tough to find bait as far as, you know, like live line and mackerel. You're going to have to go up to P-Town to get it or east to Chatham to get your mackerel. Um, so far as bait goes, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to stay small at this time of the year. Or if you, if you don't want to guess and you want to hook up and you want to make it fun for kids, you can't go wrong with the tube and worm this mm. time of the year. I don't know if you saw, we pulled up a 28-inch fluke last week. Yep. Um, and it, it, it had a mouth on it the size of a striper. But the fluke bite down in the Nantucket Shoals is still on. I think those, those fish are going to be there for the rest of this month and next month. And then, uh, and then naturally when our first storm comes in in the fall, is when you'll start, you'll go there and there'll be nothing. So if you're a fluke fisherman, you got to get down there now. Now is the time. I'm even seeing guys pulling fluke up in Cape Cod Bay, which I haven't seen that in God knows how many years. So mm. it's nice to see that uh, the fluke are making a big comeback. But if you're looking for the doormat, um, your best bet is to take the long ride down to Davis Shoal in uh, Nantucket and that's where the bigger ones are but um, if you're looking to fill your limit um, Nantucket shows is the way to go and have you heard anything about sea bass still kicking around Bruno you know the sea bass were pretty thick in the shoals for a while but um, I think after some of the wind that we've gotten they've, they've started to, they're starting to you know go back into the deeper water and last thing I want to ask you is just because I know that you're Relatively an expert on the Nantucket Sound area. We get a lot of people asking Bruno about, you know, sort of tips or intel on how to fish Nantucket Sound from the beach or if you want to go out and launch a small craft. Any tips or advice for this time of year on people trying to fish Nantucket Sound either from the beach or by boat? One of your best bets is fishermen's landing over by Bass River. I would definitely try that if you're coming to the Cape and trying something from from land and uh, you get a pretty good shot at picking up a uh, bluefish, a striper, and even a possibility of a funny fish. This time of the year, you never know 
what's going to swim by the beaches here. If you're hitting the sound by boats, I would highly recommend Horseshoe Shoal if you want to get on some gator-sized bluefish this mm-hmm. time of the year. Um, there might still be some sea bass out in Horseshoe Shoal, and um, you could definitely you know, try the tire reef if you want to do some bottom fishing and keep the kids entertained. But um, if, you, if you take a little bit longer ride and get out towards the uh, Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard Islands, you're, you're going to see um, a good shot at some funny fish and some bigger striper. Well, that's great intel, Bruno. Really appreciate all the information that you're willing to share on the podcast. I know the members appreciate it as well. I'm going to let you get back to work down at Cape and Islands, Mitsubishi, my man, and we will talk to you in the near future. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, next up on this week's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast is our good friend Phil Howarth from down at the Goose Hummock in Orleans. Phil, how are you on this beautiful morning? Oh, it's certainly a beautiful day, Kevin. I uh, wish I was fishing, but, you know, it's another day, uh, under. Another working day, but no, it's uh, glorious, thank you. And Phil, I know you're a really busy guy, and we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us some information, and let's dive right into the topics that we have this week, and we want to start off with some surf casting reporting. Any surf casting action along the back beaches this week? Yeah, it slowed down a bit because the pogies moved off last week. You know, last Monday, um, they all disappeared. So for a week or so now, the pogies have been hard to find. And that storm we had blew some colder water in, which kind of slowed it down a bit. That said, um, what day are we on Friday? On Monday night, um, one of my friends had a 45-inch fish off one of the uh, outer beaches. So, yeah, the fish is still there. Um, yeah, it's more of a nighttime bite. Um, you know, and we're still casting the big plugs, it's the big outcastlers or the big ocean borns or, you know, big gibs and things like that, the, the classic old big heavy pencil poppers do well especially when the surf's been up like we had after that rough weather it really gets the bass going so it's been pretty good but it's died you know the, the people trying during the day aren't doing so well now like i say the pogies were 50 yards off the beach they're not there anymore how has the action been inside cape cod bay in general and out toward p-town whether it's you know you're hearing things from the beach or, or by boat in the bay it's mainly a um, boat bite billingsgate's been on, doing okay you know, um, catching Richie M- Emerson, um, he he fishes in Cape Cod Bay from Rock Harbour, and uh, Richie on the Empress, he had two 40-pound fish on a charter last week during the day on live pogies up near Wellfleet Harbour. So there's still some big fish in there, um, and, and the water temperature's gone down again, down a bit. So, you know, that ironically in the bay is a good thing because it was like 80 degrees at one stage, and now it's in the, in the high 60s again. So that'll get the fish a little bit more turned on. Um, but the other thing that's been really good, which actually is helping the beach guys as well, especially up around Wellfleet, if you can get off Lieutenant Island, um, there's been a really good bluefish bite. Mm. Um, and, yeah, bluefish are always hungry, always aggressive, so they're really sporting to catch, um, and especially around the Wellfleet area off the beaches, especially in the evening, more so in the evening during the day. There's been some really good blitzes and some really nice size, you know, 8, 10, 12-pound bluefish being caught. Phil, are there any folks talking about funny fish arriving yet in the Lower Cape area? It's fair to say everybody's talking about it. Yep. Um, everybody's talking, nobody's catching. I think the, um, so the Albies aren't really here yet up this way, but the Benito run has been insane. You know, again, I was, I was, Richie, I was speaking to Richie this morning. He had a 31-inch um, Benito on his boat yesterday. Wow. And that's a honking great Benito. And from a sporting perspective, epic fun. And that was in Cape Cod Bay. So the Bonito are running really strong, the biggest they've ever run. Um, and we know the Albies are not going to be far behind them. You know, there's, there's peanut bunkers starting to appear everywhere, and that's normally the trigger. So, but I'd say, I know Danny from the story, Danny's got his day off on Sunday. He will be Albie fishing, so I don't doubt in the next week or so. He's, you know, he's normally right about now that it starts. So it's kind of imminent, but not here yet. But they are down, you know, down in, I know down, I've heard of them down in Falmouth, off Nantucket, I've heard them as well, so... They're coming. We just talked about baby tuna. Let's talk about big tuna, bluefin tuna. What are you hearing is, in terms of a report for, on the bluefin bite? Still batshit crazy. Um, if you fish east of Chatham now, it's harder not to catch than it is to catch. I don't mean that in a blasé fashion. It, it, the fishing's phenomenal out east right now. Um, and I was talking to Captain John Clothier on the Shearwater yesterday, and what he reported 
was that south of the sword, there's a huge pile of small fish in the sort of 45 to 70 inch category. And yeah, they're starting to move north through the sword. I've heard more and more people at the sword catching smaller fish in amongst the bigger fish, which is fantastic for the guys with the recreational license. They're still deep. Um, but yesterday when John was down there, he saw surface breaking small fish and he marked them at 30, 40 feet. So the fish are starting to come off the sand deals on the bottom. And I hopefully, um, I think I told you in the last report, is we fished uh, Peach Canyon last weekend, but mm. we can just go on the weekend before. And we came across five miles of half beaks just off Nantucket. And as those half beaks come into the Chatham waters, then these smaller tuna are going to get very aggressive on the surface. And we could get a run and gun season, which would be phenomenal. Um, but there's still big fish out there. Yeah, one of my customers yesterday um, fought and safely received, you know, he re- he's his first ever bluefin. It was 86 inches. He got that away safely. And, and then his next fish of the day was a 72 inch fish, which he kept. So he's got tuna for the winter. So, yeah, really, really good. Um, I'm still hearing it more of east. I know Middlebank is fishing well on stale wagon, but the traditional areas off the golf ball and things are still quiet, and that's mainly because the half peaks haven't got there yet. It's all coming together, and I think, in, you know, come Labor Day, um, I think it's just going to start getting going, mate. I really do. I know the big game battle just took place. What are you hearing about the canyons? Yeah, I heard I was in the wrong one. I fished beach the other day. <laughs> Uh, and I should have been in hydro 20 miles ago. The hydro bite was insane during the big game battle. One of my customers went two for eight on white marlin. Another guy got wolf packed um, by big, big eye, you know, 200 pound plus big eye, and pretty much broke everything he had on the boat because uh, they're that destructive a fish. Um, but yeah, they actually ripped one of his. One of his stingers was hanging in the outriggers whilst he was fighting another fish. And another, another big eye came up and took it out midair. Oh. So the you know beach where we were was quiet. We tong the um the mahi mahi and we got a few yellowfin but the, the hydro is where it's at but yeah the waters will slowly be going south um with that rough weather the, the canyons are just settling down for for this weekend i i move in house tomorrow so i'll kind of try to stay focused on that rather than reading i get the daily roths report which torments me on a daily basis because i can see where it is i haven't looked at that for a day or two but um, the canyons still will be hot, yes. you just got to find out where the break is. And obviously, after rough weather, you don't get a, a settled temperature break for very long. So it doesn't give the time to the fish to consolidate. Uh, but if you get on them, the bite's been red hot out there. Phil, following the Instagram for the goose hummock, it seems like your son's been doing some freshwater fishing and catching some largemouths. And we've talked a little bit about the great kettle ponds that Cape Cod has to offer Talk a little bit about what the Goose Hummock has to offer, you know, the freshwater fishermen and how freshwater fishing is going this summer. Yes, this obviously, yeah, as I say on these reports, the trout seems, you know, a waste of time. Um, but the largemouth fishing is really good. Jake had a four and a half pound fish the other day. One of his mates said that he lost it at the boat, what we estimated five pound fish. Um, he's fishing Senkos. Also fishing, um, the, the, there's a lot of juvenile perch around, and the, and the largemouth bass absolutely love it. So throw a perch pattern, whether it be a you know, Yozuri stick bait or something. Um, Senkos have been doing really well. And gearing up for the fall, you know, we, we were low on inventory. We've just brought in a huge striking order and um, a huge freshwater. We brought in about thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 worth of freshwater gear to help everybody get ready for the fall as the striper fishing starts to slow down. So, yeah, we, I, we've got it all, but, you know, it's a, it's a part of Cape Cod fishing that gets overlooked. You know, the largemouth, you know, catching four or five pound fish, Jake was in his pedal kayak. Um, it's great sport, great fun. And he's in, and the water's actually stayed pretty clear this year. So you've got, yeah, you've got great visibility. It's really good, really good fun. And you can go any, any of the ponds. A little bit of advice would be to try and search out the more remote ponds without giving Jake's pond away. Yep. Yeah, you know, because the, the ponds in Nickerson, for example, are getting absolutely hammered now because there's so many people in the park. Yep. Be a bit more adventurous and, you know, subject to making sure you've got legal access to a piece of water, try and get on somewhere different. And if you can, try and get out on a kayak or something and just pedal around a bit. And, Phil, we also saw on Instagram that the goose is fully stocked with some clamming gear. I've been doing a lot of shell fishing this year. I've, I got my shell fishing license up here in Plymouth. It's been great. I've been getting, you know, sea clams, steamers, mussels. Talk a little bit about what the goose has for the shell fishermen. Yeah, for shell fishermen, we stock at um, a company called RA Rib, 
So Maggie Rib is a wonderful lady. Um, we sell her rib, her rib rakes. So we have a full range from the only thing we don't have is little necks at the moment because a guy left the business. But we're not coming soon. We have basket rakes. We have scratches. And the lovely thing about them all, they're all handmade in Harwich. Um, so it's nice to be dealing with a local Cape Cod company. Um, but it's a wonderful you know, family activity. And, and you know, come the social distance in rant. Um, it's a wonderful getaway to get away from everybody and you know, just easily catch your dinner. You don't need the expense of a fishing rod and reel or anything. Just go clamming and, and you know, have some fun at low water. Um, the other thing is the water, you know, as the water starts to cool off a bit, um, we've got a full range of whether it be thigh waders or chest waders, depending on how keen you are to get wet. But you know, you know, all you need is a, a rake, a basket and a gauge and a license from the town that you're going to be shell fishing in. Really cool way to spend the day, really is. Thank you, Phil, so much for your time today. We really appreciate you sharing so much of it with us and so much information with all the members. And I look forward to catching up with you in the near future. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, speak to you soon. Have a great weekend. Well, thanks to Phil Howarth from the Goose Hummock Shop down in Orleans for sharing some time with us on this beautiful morning. And thank you to all of our guests that joined us on today's edition of the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast, starting with MFCC founder and creator Ryan Collins, Bruno Demir of Cape and Islands Mitsubishi, and last but not least, Phil from down at the Goose Hummock in Orleans. And also a big thank you to all of you, the members who are listening to the podcast. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me on this week's show. This is your host, Kevin Collins, signing off the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. And until we talk again, tight lines and take care. Thanks for tuning in to the My Fishing Cape Cod podcast. For the latest local news, information, and fishing reports, be sure to log on to MyFishingCapeCod.com. From all of us at My Fishing Cape Cod, tight lines and take care.